कर रहा हूँ क्या था बोलो starting the session we are just waiting for some other people to join us so be online thank you students from various teams faculty and uh, today's expert for the session thank you all for taking your time to join us today as we talk about not of knowledge it's an initiative under the aegis of isi student academy to incorporate the training and learning to participants of various motor sports events of isi india it's a platform where students can learn we uh, learn about motor sport events and vehicle, vehicle design, dynamics, manufacturing process, business plans, costing and accounting, and <coughs> simulation software updates in technological advancement in the automobile industry itself. They can also learn about updates on job and making career in automobile industries to this. So, this is to enable the easy learning process for the participants and will be an individual platform for participants to engage with the industry experts to more about the actual industry process. Thus, the result in making smarter, sustainable, knowledge to, knowledgeable students to perform well at the competitions and of the courses, of course, at the career of their life. So, I would like to tell you about our speaker, Mr. Dhanidhar Yadav. He is a motorsports enthusiast and an alumni of Electric Solar Vehicle Championship, who led his team from zero to the podium. He has done BTEC in mechanical engineering and currently working in Tata Consultancy Service. Being a leader, he has command over team management, pressure handling, technical skills, and so many relevant things to the motorsports. So in this session, he will talk us to, uh, he will take us through his expertise, that is steering system design and simulation along with the various terminologies of vehicle stability and power grid. So with this, I will welcome sir to the program and request you to take over the further session. Thank you sir. Uh, thanks man. Uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Yeah, yeah. So, 
so guys uh, aman has already introduced me so there is no uh, need of further introduction so uh, i am going to uh, tell you all about steering systems and it is also a very important part of the vehicle as you all know uh, can we start on hello yes sir we can start okay okay i am sharing okay. Uh, I think my PPT is visible to all. Yes, sir, it's visible. Okay. okay. So uh, I am going to give you knowledge about how you can design your steering system. and how will you do this simulation of the steering system like kinematic simulations and also the static simulations of our steering parts and how you will be able to manufacture your steering part i think uh, there are team members who are going to participate in the event so they will need its knowledge i think so let's start so uh, i am uh, going to tell you about the contents in this uh, module so we will uh, first uh, first i will tell you about the introductions and uh, later on how why do you require a good steering system and steering geometry ackerman geometry steering effort kinematic simulations right and pinion design and cad model analysis i will let you know about all these topics in this module so yeah uh, first let's talk about the introduction part so i think uh, everyone is aware about how modern uh, times are going th through the automations and also like you know uh, we can drive the car without drivers you know i think in 20 30 years uh, there will be no need of drivers if we are moving that fast so steering uh, system is also crucial part and uh, we need to modify it we need to automate it and uh, we need to go further in the advancement as per the technology so uh, steering system is a very important part of the vehicle so through steering system we can gain the stability of our vehicle like how we will able to maneuver our vehicle and uh, like how you will be able to gain stability through your steering system and what time of type of mechanism you will be use like like and pinion be circulating ball and there are many more mechanism are also available and in car generally we use power steering system right and pinion uh, steering mechanism is a frequently used system because it is very convenient and very compact to manufacture and also to use so we will talk about the stability conditions and designing of right and pinion gear and we i will also tell you about the results of solid works analysis because due to limit of time i will not able to show you about the simulations so and also in steering system you need to be very, very careful about the calculation because uh, like very small mistakes can lead to a disastrous results so it is in a very you know uh, you need to be very thoughtful about when you are going to design any steering system or when you are go going to do analysis on the steering system so you must be very careful and very thoughtful about the what will be the impact of our steering systems but how Uh, it will it is going to impact the suspension system and also the wheel base track width of the steering system so steering system is uh, one of the crucial parts of the vehicle so let's move so why do we need a good steering system the first thing you need to understand that what are the your objectives for your steering system like uh, if you uh, you need a minimum turning radius to turn your vehicle because uh, if you need a more turning radius then you will require a you know very big space and your wheel base of the and track width of your vehicle is going to increase and there will be many more things you know so you need to be convenient about the turning radius and uh, you need to understand like uh, Uh, when you are going to turn the vehicle about the cornering force as lateral forces and friction forces there are many more forces is going to impact your vehicle so you need to be very careful about the turning radius of your vehicle and you need 
to also understand what the directional stabilities of the, your breaker like directional stabilities in the sense if you how are you going to steer your breaker in what way or what forces are required to steer your breaker and how are you going to you know like you are moving at the speed of 80 and you are going suddenly turning your breaker so what forces will it impact uh, your vehicle need not, not to be rolled while making a turn so you need to keep these things in your mind while designing the steering system and also we must uh, look after the auto return like many of people have the knowledge about how to drive a car so when you turn a car and you don't need to re return your steering system to make the uh, uh, make the tire position straight ahead so you need to also understand the straight head recovery or the auto return mechanism of your steering wheel you need to also know about the effort which you are putting on your steering wheel to turn a vehicle or to maneuver a vehicle. Like uh, uh, you need to keep the effort uh, a bare minimum, not I will not going to say very minimum, a bare minimum which is adequate for the person to use it. So you need to also know about the effort of the steering system. So your uh, performance of the steering system is heavily influenced by your steering mechanism and uh, your steering parts like steering column, steering wheel, linkage systems and your mechanism right in pinion or research pulling ball and there are many more mechanisms available if you will study in deep. So like I will tell you about the what are the considerations for good steering system. So you need to first know about your design must be simple and light because you know you need to keep in mind uh, uh, about your weight of your vehicle because if you are participating in computations then weight have its own markings and weight is also a key factor for the competition. So your priority should be high about you know what material you are choosing for your steering wheel, steering system and mechanism and how you are going to minimize the weight and maximize the FOS, uh, safety of factor. So you need to keep these things in your mind and you need to uh, know about low steering ratios you know uh, steering ratio is basically uh, what degree of turn your steering wheel is making and how much angular turn is going to be maneuvered by your wheel so you need to understand about steering ratio and we, i will talk about ackerman geometry in this session because uh, if we are talking about uh, uh, low speed vehicles then Ackermann geometry is uh, perfect for it and it uh, you know it needs a very bare minimum parts for its maneuvering so and generally it has a very wonderful impact about skidding of the vehicle because it reduces you know uh, skidding time of the vehicle so if we are going to talk about the steering geometry so steering geometry uh, you know there are you need to keep in mind about five factors about your steering geometry priority there are more than 10 factors which used to impact the steering system so we will talk about camber caster kingpin inclination or some of the people will use upright so toe in toe out and thrust angle no setback and there are many more factors like what is your uh, rebound adjoints rebound of your suspension system so these things you know suspension is very more or less impact steering system you know time to time so you need to understand also you need to understand about the alignment of your steering system because you know steering is 50 or 60 percent solely depend upon the alignment so you you need to also worry about the angles you know angles is a very you know crucial part of the steering system so uh, you need to know about what are the angles making like slip angle and uh, uh, the angle made by steering wheel or the angle made by uh, uh, wheel of the vehicle so you need to keep these things in your mind let's uh, talk about camber so what is camber angle many of uh, you people have seen heavy duty vehicles like if you will see clearly it's for our front tires used to you know have a um, bit outside to its uh, vertical axis uh, i think some of you have noticed it so the, these are called positive cambers camber is the angle made between the vertical axis and the uh, lateral axis of the wheel 
uh, wheel of the respective vehicle. So the angle made between these two axes is called camber. So camber also impact, you know, uh, like how much uh, your tire is going to be, uh, like what is the dimensions of your contact patch, which is making contact with the road. So you need to know about these things very well. So camber, uh, camber angle is, you know, two types positive or negative. So negative camber angle when your tire is tilted, you know, inward, then it is called a camber angle. Uh, negative camber angle and when your tire is tilted outward it is called positive uh, positive camber so generally in heavy duty vehicles you know, we use positive cambers and also camber plays a very important role uh, while designing a vehicle to tire wheel because if we put our camber more than you know 7 8 degrees then our tire is going to wear very frequently then it is not a very cost effective thing and uh, also uh, negative camper generally we use in like uh, uh, tractors uh, we use uh, negative cameras for uh, proper maneuvering of these things and also we will see the scrub radius scrub radius you know is nothing uh, scrub radius is nothing it is generally just uh, you know uh, the axis uh, like steering axis and the vertical axis of the tire, the distance between these two axes, vertical distance between these two axes is called scrub radius. So scrub radius is also a very important factor uh, for steering design. Uh, like uh, scrub radius, uh, it is going to impact the slip angle of your tire. So uh, if you are uh, you have studied it, then you know about these things. Uh, we will see about the caster angle, you know, camber angle we used to see it from the front side and you will notice the caster angle from the side view, you know, uh, in vehicle dynamics or in vehicle, uh, your view is very important, on what front you are viewing the vehicle, like front view, side view or top view or it is regarding any axis, so you need to know about these things. So, caster anybody is saying something yeah. hello mm. am i not audible hello no, sir, your, your voice is audible your voice is audible you are audible yeah i thought someone is interrupting me like someone wants to say something okay should i continue yes sir sure you can continue. no problem okay. Uh, we will talk about caster angle. So, caster angle is basically the angle made between the steering axis and the vertical axis of the tire. Uh, like, uh, you know, when we you see from the side front, then your kingpin axis or steering axis and the vertical axis of your tire made an angle between them. That is caster angle. Caster angle is very helpful for auto return. I have talked about the auto return in the beginning. So, you need to know about the auto return mechanism. We can't keep you know caster angle more than two three degrees. So two three degrees is enough. Uh, we will see about the kingpin inclinations. You know uh, the angle made between kingpin axis and the vertical yeah vertical plane that is called kingpin angle. So we also need to understand at on what degrees we need to you know tilt our kingpin. Then and generally we don't use king pin we use upright or you know many suspension system so you need to be very careful about you know tilting of your king pin because it will hardly uh, hardly impact your vehicle because you know uh, you will uh, be you know uh, you will be adjusting your coordinating forces and friction forces through your king pins your uh, you know the component of these forces are going to act on your king pin so the more or lesser your king pin will be hampered by these components of these forces and also kingpin also helps you to reduce the tire uh,
So your voice is not audible actually. Okay. Am I audible? Yeah, now you are audible, sir. Okay, yes, sir. So, you can continue, sir. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, you can see the uh, uh, top side of the picture. Like, we, know, we don't need to keep thrust angle because we need to do the thrust angle as zero. Because you know, uh, if you are going to make a uh, thrust in your vehicle, then it is going to impact you on every moment. Like every time you are putting uh, pedal uh, or brakes, or you are putting, you know, accelerating your vehicle. If you will do any impact or any sudden impact on the vehicle, the thrust angle going to harm. You. So you don't need to uh, keep the thrust angle, and you should also not be setbacks in the tire. Setback is the thing, you know, like your uh, front wheels or rear wheel should be you know at a perpendicular distance between them so you don't need to put any angles between these two wheels either of the front or the rear so you don't need to put setback no thrust these things are you know very carefully adjusted and also you can see the camber and caster of you know for there are real examples because generally you have seen this type of images so we will talk about toe in and toe out so uh, it is clearly depicted in the picture that uh, what is the position of the toe in and what is the position of toe out so in camber you used to see it from the front and in caster you used to see it from the side view and in toe in toe out you will judge it from the top view because you know uh, it is visible from the top view you know if somebody is going to ask you about these angles what is the difference between these angles so these angle, angles are clearly impacted upon their views so uh, those are also known as tracking so uh, positive to you know uh, Positive toe generally we don't use to keep mm, positive toe in our vehicle because uh, you know if you are going to positive toe then you are not be able to drive your vehicle in a high speed. If you need uh, like uh, you will keep, uh, uh, take the positive toe in tractor because you know they are heavy duty vehicle they need to you know keep heavy loads. So positive toe generally used on these type of vehicles and toe is also causes you know tire wear so you need to minimize the tire wear as much as possible so uh, now we are going to talk about Ackermann steering geometry so uh, I am uh, briefing about what are Ackermann system so there are two mechanisms like Ackermann or anti Ackermann which is also called the Davis mechanism system so generally in Ackermann systems like uh, you know the steering is in the rear of the wheels and in Ackermann system, the uh, calculations are very short. And uh, Ackermann geometry is generally used in you know low speed vehicles like 40, 50. If you are going to use in like 80, 90 uh, speed of vehicle, so uh, this geometry is not going, uh, going to give you a very profitable results. So modern cars do not use pure Ackermann steering system because it. Uh, uh, it ignores the dynamics, uh, compliances or causes of the vehicle. So the intention of Ackermann geometry is to avoid the need for tire to slip. You know, uh, you need to understand about the slip angle. So while maneuvering your vehicle, your scrub radius and your slip angle play uh, play a very crucial role in it. So you must be very aware about your speed of the vehicle and your slip angles and what is the contact patch and where it lies when you are driving the vehicle. So you need to keep these small details in your mind while designing a system. So are also you, you know, uh, steering calculations, uh, you need to be very careful about the calculations of the steering system because one small mistake can lead to a very, you know, uh, big issues for your steering system. And once your steering system is going to get manufactured or used, going to get stabilized because on a steering calculation many calculation depends like stability of vehicle suspension calculations like ergonomics of your vehicle so these thing uh, these things used to you know co-align with your steering system so you need to be very careful like you know where uh, you can see the four arm um, determined geometry 
so this is generally a four linkage system uh, which is depicted in the picture while making a turn you can see the uh, places or positions of your arms and your tires while making a turn with the help of Ackermann geometry and these turns you know very carefully designed through kinematic simulation because you must know at what degree how much your wheels are going to make an angular turn so simulation is very important if you are utilizing a four bar mechanism uh, without any mechanism you can also utilize steering system uh, like uh, you can see various parts of the steering system like steering arm rack pinion tie rod gearbox pitman arm relay link idler arm so these are the parts of the steering system and also you can see the positions of your wheel and what they are called while making a turn uh, if they are making a right turn how the wheels alignment look like if they are making a left turn how the wheel alignment is look like and straight head everyone is aware about it uh, if you talk about the perfect steering calculation through formulation you know in steering system formula formulas are just going to you know give a very go around result it is not going to give you accurate result it is going to you know give it what uh, like uh, an you know end range uh, on what range your perfect steering conditions are going to fall so formulas are good but simulations are mandatory for any steering system so like you can see the phi and theta angle made by the geometry it is simple math calculation you can see the track width and wheel base of your steering system so the phi and theta angle are made by both the wheels of the vehicle while making a turn so cot phi minus cot theta should be wheel base upon track width so sorry uh, track width upon wheel width so this condition must satisfy for Ackermann steering system so you need to be very careful generally uh, you know like while you are uh, designing a steering system you are you don't know what is theta what is phi for your steering system so when uh, you know so you need to take certain assumptions at what degrees or what degree you will require so you can guess like 40 to 42 degrees if you keep your uh, theta to 40 42 44 45 because these are you know average ranges generally we used to keep for steering system if you will you know theta angle consider then it will be going to give you a result you know generally phi comes around 27 to 32 degrees and wheel base and track width should be uh, you know uh, should be guessed by your uh, suspension system and also steering system and also many more like road cage. so these things uh, used to keep wheel base and track width and I have told already told you what this curve it is so I am not going to keep it further so we are going to talk about steering effort because you know steering effort is nothing but just the effort you are going to put while maneuvering or while steer your vehicle so you must be aware about the steering effort because you know when you are turning your vehicle there are many many forces are going to impact what is the you know how is the road uh, what is the speed of your vehicle and what is the alignment of your vehicle what is the uh, mechanism of your vehicle and how your jumps and rebound of the suspension is going to it what is the cg and weight of the vehicle and there are many more things which is going to impact your vehicle like while you are braking you should keep in mind yawing, pitching and these things so steering effort is a very important part for a vehicle you also need to know about the you know, coefficient of friction of the vehicle so uh, like uh, I have taken a you know certain example like curve weight curve weight is, is the weight without driver up so I have taken the curve weight on 180 kg and depicted FR as the frictional forces and FL is the lateral forces which is also known as cornering forces uh, so uh, while uh, making a turn to your vehicle your FL you know your lateral forces must must be compensated by frictional forces yes you are going to roll your vehicle while making a turn so you must keep in mind so if um, you can uh, literally see the calculations in the uh, ppt so 
you also need to be aware about factor of safety which you are going to take for your vehicle like you know if your vehicle is 180 kg you don't need to keep your calculations at 180 kg you must be you know like uh, take the margin like 20 30 kg so that you can you know advance in the range uh, so if you will do uh, frictional forces and lateral forces must be balanced so you need to keep this in mind while making calculation uh like uh, many of you people uh, have known about the kinematic simulation kinematic simulation is you know very soul of the steering system if you are talking about four bar mechanisms so without kinematic simulations you can't uh, you know design a, a basic steering system so i have detected uh, you know 2d images of your steering system so Um, on both extremes like vertical lines or tilted lines are depicting the tires of the very vehicle and the straight line which is connected uh, between them uh, the uh, straight line which is connecting between them is the you know like track width and uh, like you know the two steering arms um, like these are the steering arms of the vehicle and these are the rack and pinion mechanism of the steering system so Uh, generally this is a four bar mechanism and the distance between you know uh, tire and this position should be your upright or incline axis so this is called you know uh, axle step axle so you need to keep these things in mind and uh, you know kinematic simulation is a very important part of your steering designing system because through kinematic simulations you are going to uh know about uh, the dimensions of your uh, you know tie rod so tie rod and also steering arm and also the maneuvering conditions of your vehicle like uh, uh what is the steering ratio so all these things should comprise or should fully depend ever on the simulation you are going to make for simulations like you have, uh, have seen in the formula like cot phi minus cot theta is equal to uh, uh no, track width upon wheel width so these are going to give you a you know very little information about the uh, turning radius of your vehicle but through kinematic simulations you should be 80 90% sure about the vehicle so if you are going to do kinematic simulations you know uh, just the simulation word is going to you know we need to vary certain parameters or certain things to get a you know get an result for us so uh, like uh, for kinematic simulations we used to you know keep two three parameters uh, you know varying and one parameter should be fixed like kinematic simulation what is the fi- uh, fixed value like step x uh, which is this part uh, the joint between uh, kingpin axis and the wheel is known as step x or x and also the steering arm and also the tie rods so through kinematic simulations through kinematic simulation we need to find about the uh, tie rod mainly am i not audible to you or you are audible sir no issues with the yeah voice. yes sir uh, somebody have messaged me that i am not audible okay okay, okay check your internet connectivity uh, rosen and so uh, Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. You can start the session. Okay. So, uh, kinematic simulation like uh, uh, we need to find about the length of the tie rods because no formula is going to give you about the tie rods length. So, you know, like the distance, the vertical or the perpendicular distance between you know uh, between the front of your tires or and the uh, uh, rack. So. this perpendicular distance you should be keeping it constant constant and also the uh, track width and wheel base of your vehicle is going to be constant and after putting three parameters constant you need to vary two parameters or three parameters to get the result type like your the length of your tie rods the length of your rack and the length of your steering arm so if and you also note down the result you know mm, about uh, uh, you should also note down your results somewhere so that you can you know uh, you can just what is the right position for our vehicle like uh, you know 
you are going to tilt your tower uh, direct 35 degrees what will be the these length because uh, if if you will do these calculations you will understand what i am telling because you know tie rod length keep changing if the simulation is not correct and you can't change the length of your tie rod uh, if you uh, in a running vehicle or in a static vehicle so this simulation must be confirmed before you know putting a vehicle on the road so you must keep this in your mind about the kinematic simulation and also you uh, you need to do kinematic simulations at least uh, 20 30 times before uh, putting it in practically because you know uh, one small mistake can look to a disaster system because one once you are going to fix your track width and wheel waist and like positions of your kingpin axis and stub axles and dragon pinion so uh, every other things like suspension roll case and ergonomics these things are going to fit according to your mechanism so you must be careful while you are giving your you know your steering mechanism your kinematic simulation parameter you must do 20 30 times this simulation you should keep two three parameters fixed and uh, just uh, you know varying the two three parameters and you will get the optimal result which you are required so I am going to give you a brief discussion about the design of track and pinion and don't be fearful about these months written things. So it will give you a you know, brief hint how you are going to design your rack and pinion. It, it also plays a very important part for uh, gear designing. So and there are many more many methods to you know design a, a rack and pinion system. And I am given this, uh, you know, if you know about the Milkens, so I am getting getting a bottom reference from the Milkens. So first we need to identify the C factor. C factor is nothing; it is just the linear distance traveled by your rack in one rotation of your pinion. Uh, pinion is you know rotating part, and uh, rack is your you know linear distance traveling part. So you must uh, know about C factor and you need to assume your C factor because nobody is going to tell you what is what will be the linear distance or what will be the uh, piece of the diameter of your gear. So you must uh, you know assume two three parameters on this basis you are going to you know identify two three other parameters and you need to keep doing this practice until on this you are going to get your desired result. So in a steering system you must be you know very uh, good about assuming the things. So let's. Uh, I have assumed C factor V82, and you can see this formula: one upon steering ratio is equal to sine inverse of C factor upon steering arm length. Thina. So suddenly, this formula is going to give a brief about steering ratio. You should know what you are going to keep your steering ratio because there are you know very much formula floating on the internet or on the Quora about how to design a steering system. So you must keep this in mind, you are utilizing you know, correct formula while designing your steering system. So if you are fixing the C factor and steering arm length, then your steering ratio will vary. Uh, if you are fixing your steering ratio, then your C factor and steering arm length will come according to it. Because you know, you should know what are the conditions you must reach what uh, you need in your vehicle like steering ratio should be 6 is to 1 here yeah, 12 is to yeah, 12 is to 1 so you need to keep these things in your mind and steering arm length uh, will become through kinematic simulation you know formula is just going to give you in a close result like uh, in formula you are uh, seeing 94.68 but through kinematic simulation it can be changed up to 85 to you know 105 it is just going uh, to give you a close result by which you can decide on what uh, we need to do simulations uh, and for no interference like uh, interference is you know uh, like rack have gears in groups on it and pinion have its own gears in group, in group on it so these things must you know uh, running in a uh, without interfere these uh, tooths of these gears shouldn't be interfering with them because you know interference can cause a disaster scissor for a steering system and, you know you are driving your car and suddenly your steering had been stuck somewhere so it will lead us to uh, accidents so you must be careful about the interference of your steering system so this formula is clearly 
uh, gotten from the uh, Vivi Bhandari book. So m is less than or equal to r into sin square x. So where m is the module, a uh, module is nothing is uh, module is you know uh, the number of teeth on the pinion to the number of teeth on the rack and vice versa is also true. So it is just all about how you are going to utilize the form. R is the pinion, uh, pinion radius and x is the pressure angle. So let's take the pressure angle is 20 degree. Uh, the angle I have assumed 20 degrees is not uh, from my side because you know if you know about designing so there are certain fixed parameters on which com uh, components have been manufactured like 15 degree, 20 degree, 25 degree or 30 degree these are standard angles on which equipment used to mend because you know we can't manufacture uh, different 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 equipments so we will not able to replace it as desired. So we have assumed the pressure angle 20 degree by keeping the uh, factors for the safety in our mind. So from the formula uh, we have gotten Nm is 1.87. It has given us the maximum value of the module. So uh, this you know on the right hand side you can see 1, 1.52 or 1.25. You know these two are different systems on which modules have been defined. So you need to keep uh, safety features in your mind on what you know there are uh, two three trains of uh, you know uh, designers so you need to keep in mind on what theory you are going to proceed so I have taken M as 1.5 because really it is an standard and it is it will also give you a light weighted component so from M you can identify you know uh, addendum and addendum of your gear and piece circle diameter and uh, you need to know about how much teeth you are going to fit your in pinion and the random and the random will lead you about you know restriction about the uh, teeth on your pinion because you know your teeth on the pinion is going to be very you know uh, uh, contradicting factor about the rotation of your steering wheel so you need to keep in your mind that how much uh, teeth are you going to get give into your pinion and the teeth on the rack is you know it should be minimum 18 but it can vary like you know generally steering used to turn you know 270 360 or 420 degrees so different different vehicles use different different steering uh, steering rotations so uh, you need to keep your teeth on the rack according to your need or according to your requirement so right. by uh, and uh, we will see uh, we are seeing the cat no, 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 no. like how i get it Some, like something like a hundred percent yeah. um uh, uh, please uh switch off the microphone uh so i request everyone to please mute themselves as our speaker is speaking something and teaching us very well so uh, we, I am going to, uh, I have depicted the result of CAD model analysis. This is a CAD model of rack. So generally in rack, we need to careful about two things like the thickness of your tooth, the strength and durability of your tooth, tooth of the rack, and also the you know uh, the strength of the material on which rack has been made. So your tooth shouldn't be bent while maneuvering so your uh, strength of your tooth should be you know as high as possible generally we used to take factor of safety while designing rack and pinion is about almost 12 to 15 so this is a very high FAS because you know your steering system or your vehicle is not going to meet all the assumed criteria uh, which you have designed because you know the road must be rugged or uh, you are uh, driving on a hilly trains or sudden uh, you know holes or uh, watery ways have jumped down so these things will impact your steering system like rust and non you know non lubricated parts of your steering system can uh, stack up to your uh, uh, rack so you need to keep in your mind about two things the strength of the tooth and durability of tooth of the rack and the strength of, of the material on which rack has been engraved. So you need to do very careful, uh, you know, simulation of your rack by keeping one portion fixed. Like if you are fixing the rack and putting some, you know, stress 
on the air to like in designing you have seen the 20 degree pressure angle so pressure angle is the angle at which the uh, the strength is going to apply the forces are going to act at, at, at which angle on the two so you know 20 deg at 20 degrees the angle are going to act on the two so you must be aware about the failure of your tooth of your pinion so generally en20 gun metal and there are many more materials available for your lab design and the previous simulation are going to give a brief about the tooth of the rat and this simulation is going to give you a brief about your the about the material which you have chosen for your rat. so if you are fixing the tooth like you you have improved you have uh, put at the width of your tooth so very carefully and your tooth is not going to bend and suddenly you have made a turn and your you know your rat has been bent so it it is also an failure so you must be aware that must end the rat fail must end the tooth fail so your tooth must be as hard and as durable as possible and your rat must also be as hard and as durable as possible so that it can satisfy its you know its use its need while you are driving the vehicle this is pinion you know pinion have its tooth improved on it, it like uh, it is in spur gear so uh, in pinion uh, you must be aware about you know same thing like the shaft which is uh, which is attached to the pinion must be you know as durable as strength as possible and uh, the number of gears which you have put it on your uh, someone is saying i am not audible am i audible Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay, okay. So, uh, 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 we need to be aware about the shaft we have used for, you know, our pinion, and also the tooth engraved on the pinion. Uh, and uh, like rack, the tooth of the pinion must sustain the forces which have been impacted to the pinion, and pinion will directly impact your steering wheel. so pinion will also play a crucial part like uh, the tooth of pinion must end fail and you know like uh, interference must end happen within the rack and pinion uh, you know movement and the shaft which is attached to the pinion must be uh, its distance must be comparable to what we need so we need to be you know aware about the static and dynamic failures of your uh, steering system this this is basically a simple rack and a pinion mechanism system so in this figure you have uh, you can see that the your shaft your pinion is failed and the load is applied on the tooth at what limit your tooth is going to fail and uh, you know uh, like in this figure you can see your tooth of the pinion is fixed and the load is applied on the shaft so that the testing of both uh, tooth and the shaft should be tested and you know if you are doing testing on the uh, software or any simulation software like lotus ncs sortworks and adams these kinds of software so uh, you need to be aware like there are many physical factors which is going to impact your vehicle like suppose you have purchased a material on which your tooth are going to grab and your ma uh, material have you know certain lining or certain uh, fracture limits have been you know engraved inside which are without anyone knowing which can be detected by ultrasonic testing so there are also very practical things which is uh, going to harm your steering system so you must test it before putting the vehicle on the road or basically you are from competition so before putting your vehicle on the competitions so you need to be careful about the practical uh, failures or practical things and the theoretical things you know like simulation on software is a good thing but you must be practically you know test your vehicle or test your steering system by applying the particular load this should be applied so i have shown you a final design uh, uh, like you know the casing i have also shown you the casing of rack and pinion because you can't put your rack and pinion in a in an open form uh, because you know your rack and pinion must be lubricated so that uh, so for the easier maneuvering and also uh, like 
you should use bearing because you you need to going to give you uh, you know rotational support as well as static support for your pinion so bearing is also required and through steering case uh, you are going to mount the whole steering mechanism with your vehicle and you must keep ergonomics in your mind while you know while putting your steering at certain places like uh, you have put just beside the, your legs the steering mechanism and it is it is hindering you while moving your vehicle or while moving your leg so you must keep these things in your mind that your no body part should be you know distracted through steering parts and your steering wheel must be put you know somewhere below the abdomen and above the stomach so, so that you can make a little move, bit movement while driving the car and like you don't feel any restraint if you have folded your steering system uh, like you have uh, put a hand on your steering wheel and you are putting a strain like you know your hands are going to fall down by keeping up so you need to keep these things here in your mind like steering system should be you know uh, very uh, compact and very carefully designed that uh, the person which is driving you know, will not uh, strain himself so you need to keep ergonomics in your mind while driving the steering system because it is in good crucial things and the conclusion is you know uh, conclusion is that steering is a uh, uh, helps you in the navigation of the vehicle and maneuvering instability you can you know you can uh, uh, simulate it on the solid work rotor senses this kind of software like you can do kinematic simulation by software by manu manually doing it but just uh, you need to keep the result in your mind and like what are the practical and theoretical factors which are going to affect your vehicle so while designing in steering system you must be aware about these factors and also there are unforeseen events like i have explained it like you have you know a strain part you have purchased a strain part which can only be sensed through ultrasonic sensing like utm machine so you need to be careful about the materials which you have been chosen so and you should keep your safety a factor for rack and pinion around 10 to 50 because there are uh, many unforeseen conditions in which your vehicle is going to let generally in india uh, the roads are not so well so you can uh, you can come up with any kind of rock anywhere so you should keep in these things in your mind and uh, like you know if you have simulated your steering system on software it doesn't mean that practically it is going to give you the result you should also practically you know test it before putting it on the road and after analysis uh, like if you have done the analysis and you are fully confident that it is not going to fail and after careful testing you can drive your vehicle uh, thank you if somebody have any question you can ask to me we have five six minutes to go hello hello everyone if anyone wants to ask any question to sir he can ask now you have some time so please go on yeah uh, if somebody is designing an steering system in your like uh, events or in very interested you can ask any questions to me sir yes yes uh, shumit i think sir ye puchna tha ki jo rack and pinion jo rack hota hai wo matlab mostly cover face karna chahiye hamara jo front rack bit hota hai wo rack bit ke upar ya matlab thoda distance pe uh उसको मतलब इट शुड बी कीप एट सम डिस्टेंस लाइक आई हैव टोल्ड यू इन इन एक्कर मैन ज्योमेट्री द रैक शुड बी प्लेस्ड बिहाइंड द परपेंडिकुलर डिस्टेंस विद बोथ द टायर्स सो इफ यू विल डू काइनेमेटिक सिमुलेशन यू विल गेट एन अंडरस्टैंडिंग वेयर यू शुड प्लेस योर रैक बिकॉज़ ओनली थ्रू काइनेमेटिक सिमुलेशन यू कैन गेट द पोजीशन ऑफ योर रैक सो यू शुड पुट योर योर रैक यू नो समवेयर लाइक your legs uh, will not hinder while driving the vehicle and it should be placed at some concrete mounting places because you know rack with such in all the forces so it will be mounted very strongly with your vehicle 
so it will be placed according to your convenience and according to the convenience of the statics and dynamics of the beta uh, i hope i have given the your desired answer yes sir और सर एक और डाउट था जो टायर okay. होता है वो एक एंगल पे इंक्लाइन रहता है तो वो एंगल्स को कैसे फाइंड आउट करते हैं आ द ब्रैकेट से टायर और एक एंगल पे इंक्लाइन होता है ना हम्म हम्म तो उसको भी फाइंड आउट तुम काइनेमेटिक सिमुलेशन से ही करोगे बिकॉज यू नो टायर और बेसिकली फाइंड आउट होगा काइनेमेटिक सिमुलेशन से क्योंकि तुम एक दो पोजीशन को ही वैरी कर सकते हो क्योंकि अगर तुम अपनी लीनियर डिस्टेंस या ट्रैक की पोजीशन को फिक्स uh, करते हो तो तुमको काइनमेटिक टायर ऑट्स की पोजीशन को वैरी करना पड़ेगा और जिस क्योंकि टायर ऑट किसी एंगल पर फिक्स नहीं होता जनरली स्टीयरिंग आर्म एक एंगल पर फिक्स होता है एंड स्टीयरिंग आर्म से अटैच है टायर ऑट टायर ऑट होता है अगर स्टीयरिंग सिस्टम देखे हो तो तो स्टीयरिंग आर्म को तुम फिक्स करते हो क्योंकि वो जनरली बिल्डेड होता है बहुत स्ट्रॉन्गली तो वो फिक्स होता है सर्टेन डिग्रीज पे और तुम्हारा टायर आर्ट वेरी करता है तो वो जो डिग्रीज है अगर तुम फॉर्मूला देखे हो गए वन बाई स्टेन डिस्ट्रीज साइन वर्स तो वहाँ से तुम एक थ्रो आइडिया लगा सकते हो कि कितना डिग्री एंगल तुमको रखना होगा लाइक तुम मेडिकन को रेफर कर सकते हो उसमें अच्छा लिखा हुआ है एंड ग्लिप्सिन भी ओके ओके एसवर इज रैक एंड पीनियन स्टेयरिंग सिस्टम कंपल्सरी फॉर गो आई I am not aware about the events in the book, so I will not able to answer the question of as far as that. How do you proceed with steering? Stop management is mentioned in IKEA rule book. Uh, I am I am not aware about the rule book, so I will not be able to answer this question. But uh, through this session, you will be able to identify your problems and solve it, and like you can talk to your you no know, certain authority or your talking person which you have been assigned to your team you know, via isi you can he will clear your query a uh, steering stop mechanism like you know steering stop mechanism generally i am going to give you a brief idea like uh, uh, when you are you know turning your uh, uh, steering wheel so your tires must tend you know hinder it somewhere in the frame of the vehicle and uh, uh, like uh, somewhere in the vehicle so you will give a static stop like you can give any kind of plate or any limiting strap uh, at the steering arm or at the stab axle which is going to happen and you can also put it on the rack you know uh, if you will see the mechanism of rack and pinion so you can stop the rack at a certain position which will not allow your tire to you know uh, tire to stuck or hinder the parts of the vehicle how to do steering system that's it is suspension in lotus simulation software uh, uh, for this you know you need to understand it yourself because i am not give you the system of lotus simulation you can uh, in lotus simulation but i will give you a brief idea uh, you can generally you know uh, get a lotus simulation software and a very brief uh, you know lectures of lotus simulation on youtube one two lectures are available on youtube uh, you need to keep these components like all the components of steering system should be made in the lotus software or should be made in the solid box and then we inherited on the lotus so uh, you can make the components a 3d model and by varying these components you know by simulating these components you will get an analysis result lotus will give you a report about uh, angles you will put you know different four five angles in your it is going to give you four five result so you will uh, lotus is very good software for simulation in steering system uh, anybody yes, sir, have a question okay. yes yes for with respect to go karts uh, could you talk about pitman arm versus ackerman because uh, and also which is you know difficult to implement actually pitman efficiency pitman arm and drag and pinion you know pitman arm is a supporting part of the steering and steer uh, uh, rack and pinion is in mechanism so you are sure about pitman arm and uh, compare you are comparing pitman arm and drag and pinion uh, no actor Okay, so generally go kart is in you know uh, low speed vehicle, so Ackermann geometry is very useful for it. 
and uh, you can do you know rack and pinion you can purchase it from the market or you can purchase the rack and pinion uh, from the uh, uh, you can also make the rack and pinion just design it and give in any manufacturing firm it will cost you 10 12000 and pitman arm is just just a supporting for part for the rack and pinion mechanism it is not a different mechanism as how to calculate start excel length uh yeah stub excellent it is not okay. stub it is stub excellent so you know i have told you about the scrub radius and the you know uh, the slip angle of your vehicle so if you will refer militan you will see a graph of slip angle and uh, uh, scrub radius so from there you can identify the length of your stub excel or just you know you you keep your stub excel at certain distance like your uh, suspension system is not interfering with your parts or like your body frame or chassis is not interfering part you can put your stub excel con uh, uh, constant and you can move all all the other parts you know stub excel you can uh, uh, also you can you know count it in the middle case you will see the graph and there you can find the right dimensions things to consider to design joints and mechanism between steering wheel and right uh, if you are talking about joints and mechanism so like you know uh, joints are generally heme joint him heme joints heme joints are used to you know just like bearing give you a rotating support and uh, uh, rotating support and a static support to your mechanism so you should use heme mm -hmm. joints for rack and pinion mechanism and uh, steering wheel and rack and pinion system okay i think this answer you should use heme mm -hmm. joints for mm, mechanism mm, anybody else sir also would you suggest any material for stub axle uh, uh, I think go-kart is not a heavy duty vehicle, so you can use EN20 as a stub excel. And uh, like you know, MS will also do the job, but EN20 or EN24 is it will give you a wonderful result. Thank you, sir. Uh, anybody else? If anyone uh, wants to ask any question, they can ask right now. So, uh, uh, anyways, we are going to end the session afterwards. Is there anyone who want to ask anything? Uh, okay, I mean, I think nobody is want to ask any more question. So, I think okay. I should conclude this session. Yes. Uh, it is almost the time. So thanks you guys, thank you for cooperating us with this session and very thankful to the Yaman for cooperating with me. Yeah, and so I, am, I would also like to express my sincere appreciation to our today's speaker for giving such an informative session on the steering design. Yes, thank and, you. And I hope all participants have uh, got the knowledge about steering design the orchestra and camber and etc. Yes, yes. So yeah. Like Chandan Chaudhary asked about the books. You can, you know, offer Gillespie, Millikan, uh, and these two books are enough. And you can also download papers of history in design because there are not brief. In, generally, briefings have been given on these books. So you need to understand through this session and also you need to talk about your seniors which have been done this in design. Okay, Chandan. Okay, okay, man. I am leaving this session. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much for the session, sir. Thank oh, you so thank much. You, sir. Okay. And I would also like to thank all the participants who have joined us for today's session. And if you want to know more about things, so you can join us for the, our upcoming sessions. So stay tuned and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, sir.